What if I told you that a foreign government is urging its own citizens to carry loaded firearms in public to save lives? Yes, this is absolutely true. It's happened before and it's going on right now. What are we talking about? We're going to be getting into that without getting into any of the politics associated with that government one bit. But I'm told that there may or may not have been a supercomputer that was involved and scientists have confirmed what we in America are still waiting for our government to figure out and our leaders to learn. And what's that? The amount of people killed by a mass murderer may actually have a correlation to the amount of time that it takes a good guy with a gun to stop him, regardless of whether or not that good guy's wearing a badge. It's strictly depends on whether or not they have well-placed bullets. So guys, let's get into it. So we were talking about the state of Israel, and in case you may have been asleep, there have been some issues in the Middle East since, well, the start of recorded history. In case you were also asleep, the last 100 years have been no exception to that violence, and violence continues to this day. Stepping over the cross claims, I want to focus on something that Israel understands and Western politicians largely reject or deliberately turn a blind eye to, and that's this. Carrying firearms saves lives. Per the Times of Israel website, police on Monday encouraged licensed gun owners to carry their weapons to synagogues over the high holiday period. That's Yom Kippur. As the security establishment registered a rise in what are being described as possible terror plots in the lead up to, again, Yom Kippur fast day. Now, for the unfamiliar, Yom Kippur is a Jewish high holiday that follows 10 days of repentance that starts on Rosh Hashanah, the Jewish New Year, as mentioned in the book of Leviticus, chapter 23. Thank you, my bachelor's degree in theology. The date floats on our Gregorian calendar, but it usually falls somewhere around late September through early maybe to mid-October, but always starts and falls across the first 10 days of the Hebrew month of, and I apologize for my mispronunciation here, Tishrei. I'm sorry, Tishrei? The seven month of the Jewish year. Police have said that licensed gun owners were urged to, quote, to carry their guns in these times, end quote. And police went on to say, quote, therefore, we call on worshipers who have licensed guns to bring them to prayers, end quote. And just how serious is Israel about deterring violence before it starts, while also trying to ensure that any possible violence ends quickly? The state has pushed for an initiative, the armed individual in each synagogue, a police officer, a volunteer police officer, or a citizen with a gun license will be specified ahead of the holidays. Again, holidays coming up here, September 23rd, 24th on our Gregorian calendar, and will receive a briefing to prepare them for the task. Well, that does sound pretty serious. Can you imagine the mayor of New York, Boston, wherever it may be, saying that they want a good guy with a gun in every school, public place where people gather and other sensitive targets? Yeah, me neither. But apparently the police in Israel, they're not messing around. So who is right? Obviously they can't both be. After all, if the civilian disarmament crowd is in America and abroad is correct, then this strategy that can only backfire, right? Of, hey, let's put armed civilians around places. Just the notion that civilians with guns can prevent or end crime and therefore save lives. In America, civilians defending their lives with firearms is far from unusual. In fact, depending upon which study that the Center for Disease Control cited in their landmark report on the subject for gun violence, there are between 1,300 and over 8,200 defensive uses of firearms every day across the United States. Even if we go with the low number, 1,300, that's a lot of lives saved. Now, if we consider that according to studies, the vast majority of the time, around 90% to be specific, when a bad guy is confronted by a good guy with a gun, he gives up and runs away. Those are pretty good odds. And another study examined the efficacy the usefulness of using force in self-defense and found that if you meet force with force and specifically you meet that force with a firearm in your own defense, that your odds of being seriously injured actually went down versus if you offered no resistance at all. Kind of interesting. Obviously, the media picked that up and I'm not the first person telling you this, right? Maybe I should do a video just kind of going through all these studies that seemingly only I and a handful of people are aware of. Let me know in the comments section below if you want that. But back to this one. Let me be clear. While I am a staunch supporter of the Second Amendment, 
I urge people who are serious enough about protection to carry a firearm to not neglect their training and education. Me buying a banjo does not make me Earl Scruggs any more than you buying a handgun makes you John Wick, let alone a John Wick with a thorough understanding of how police, law enforcement, prosecutors, and judges will work and possibly work against you. Sometimes, also, good guy loses that deadly force encounter. And I'm not just talking about the one in the street, I'm also talking about the deadly force encounter that we call the legal one that follows it. And before people say something about Israel making it impossible to get guns for their citizens, no, just no. But before I get into that, guys, if you like this kind of content again, please click that like button, tells both myself and the algorithm that it's good, I should do more of it, and other people should be seeing it. We're gonna be wrapping this up later on the quote of the day, but first let's do a little bit more analysis on this. While there is no Second Amendment equivalent in Israel, the government has a rather liberal tendency towards issuing licenses to those individuals who apply and pass reasonably basic background checks. Now, it's more nuanced than this, and I'm happy to do another video where I go into it in more depth, but for right now, I'm just parking at low resolution right there. Now, I don't have any statistics on this, but one study that I did find from 1992 remarked that it was very easy to accomplish obtaining a firearm license. There's also no distinction noted by the same study between carrying a gun out in public and possessing it. People who have a permit to own a handgun or other weapons are allowed to carry them as well. There's also a movement afoot right now to expand access to firearms as a proven stopper of violence. As an example, just in the year 2023, between the months of February and April, there were over 12,000 gun licenses issued in those several months alone. Conversely, police and courts take very seriously the felony of possessing a firearm without a permit, which almost always means, according to studies, that that firearm was stolen. People with a previous criminal record caught with firearms are generally sentenced to a year or two in prison. The so-called gun density in Israel is very high, despite the laws. The strict limitation of gun ownership to law-abiding citizens combined with strict enforcement against those who have guns without permits apparently is a strong combination to help keep Israel's homicide rate very, very low at between 40 to 60 murders per year in a population of four and a half million. Remember, it's not the guns. It's the person carrying it that dictates the morality of how that tool is used. Our quote of the day comes from, appropriately enough, Maimonides, extraordinarily famous and noted Jewish philosopher and scholar from the Middle Ages. Quote, every person should view himself all year as if he were a half innocent and half guilty. And that is the way he should look at the world as well, as if it were half innocent and half guilty. If he sinned one sin, he placed himself and the whole world on the side of guilt. And if he performed one mitzvah, following the law, he placed himself and the world on the side of merit, end quote. Hopefully you enjoyed this. I look forward to seeing the comment section and I will see you in the next one. Thanks for sticking around to the end of the video. If you enjoyed this one, please feel free to check out some of our other great content and we'll see you in the next one.